Hi, in this video we'll talk about the mechanism of greenhouse effects and before that I would like you to read the textbook by yourself and see if you can grasp all the key idea. I will want you to read from page 335 from here through the next page and also the other page at the top. Okay, so please try to find out the keywords and try to uh, phrase maybe the mechanism of green soil effect in four to five sentences and I'll get back to you and tell you uh, what the keywords that I believe will be the most essential. Go and watch it now and pause the video. 2000 years later. All right, so let me show you what keywords I think are the most important. So first of all, the idea that you need to know is our Earth has a surface average temperature of about 2xxk. That means it's about 15 degrees Celsius. According to the textbook, I, I do think if you say 20 degrees Celsius, it's also fine as well. And using the Wang's law, uh, we talked about in the earlier video, then we should be able to find out the peak intensity of the wavelength that we are emitting is infrared, right? Like our body. So that's why it is very important uh, for us that for this planet, the green cell, if, green cell gases will be the one that you find in the later page, right? These, these four are the main four kind of green cell gases because they can absorb infrared the most. However, if you think about maybe there's another planet of a different temperature, then for that particular temperature, maybe they are emitting ultraviolet instead. I don't know. I mean, just saying, right? Maybe it is really hot, then it emits ultraviolet. So it lights the sun. So in this case, then the green salt gases on that planet would not be the same anymore with something else that has a something called the natural frequency. Uh, if you have heard about something called resonance, and that's something to do with uh, similar to when you play the swing okay maybe I, I'll draw something here so I'm, I'm pretty sure that you have played the swing like when you were young so you sit there and then uh, you kind of feel the thrill of you know swinging around and the thing is if you want to have someone to push you so that you are somehow getting higher and higher then the timing is going to be very important right because you can't just push randomly you have to push in the correct frequency. And so for different substances, different molecular structure, they will have different natural frequency. And by the way, this is why the microwave could also effectively heat up the uh, water as well in uh, when you're using microwave oven. So that's why I said uh, for greenhouse gases is only for us for or for infrared uh, on on the earth so this is why they are chosen or they are defined as the greenhouse gases and so back here um, if we try to think about those greenhouse gases what happens is they would be able to absorb the radiation which is the infrared effectively so you can see the word uh, radiation is strongly absorbed by these greenhouse gases and they would re-radiate again because uh, in fact for anything they either would receive the energy but then in that case then they would simply get way way too hot but then uh, at the same time because of their temperature they will also re-radiate out when they re-radiate out it will be like same as the diagram here okay so when you shoot the not you but the earth shoot the infrared to it they will absorb they will also re-radiate, but when they re-radiate, it's like the light bulb, right? It go in all direction. So if you, if you think about the Earth, it's right here. Of course, this is not in scale. But then this one, this one, and in fact, it's not really in six direction, right? It's, it's literally this half, all right, would, would get back to the Earth. So that's why 50% of them will get back to the Earth. And so that's why it is very important uh, to pay attention to those greenhouse gases. And this is the mechanism itself. And you want to include in your, say in your exam, uh, they ask you the mechanism, you want to include the word like greenhouse gases, strongly absorb, um, and also re-radiate by these gases in all direction. This is important, right? In all direction, because it's not going forward again, but in 
all direction going forward and also backward to the earth so you can say that it will be received by the earth surface again and causing additional warming and so that's why the textbook said uh, without the greenhouse gas it the temperature of the earth will be 32k lower than what it is so that is how we calculated the negative 16 degrees celsius so if you if you have watched the video of the 60 symbol then they also get a similar answer uh, okay, actually I find out there is actually a very good summary for you. Okay, so these, these lines basically uh, will summarize what I highlighted earlier. So you can just uh, follow this one if you like to. As for the type of greenhouse gases, here is a table, but then there is actually a typo in the textbook, at least on the version of the textbook on my screen. Can you spot it out? The typo is actually very obvious. The second one, oxygen, is not correct, obviously. Otherwise, why why do we bother and keep saying to the to our children that hey, we need to take care of the tree. We have to plant more tree to make our world, you know, a better, more suitable place for you to live. Uh, the one that is actually referring to is CO two, right? Obviously, when you burn the fossil fuel, uh, burning forest, then it would emit CO two. You may be wondering why H2O is here because like H2O is simply just water, isn't it? And pay attention that here H2O is referring to water vapor. So that is only referring to the water in the air. That is to say, for example, if you are saying H2O in solid, that means ice. Those are not relevant, of course. And the thing is for H2O, because uh, it, it does really help absorbing the heat then uh, since for H2O it's uh, just in a form of H2O most of the time then it doesn't really contribute much onto whether the green cells effect is being uh, too serious or not because the amount of water vapor in the air is more or less constant so the more th most important thing that you should focus on if you really want to resolve and help to alleviate the very serious green cell effects then you should log into the other three instead because those are the substances and gases that got released when we have a more human activity in fact uh, the amount of co2 that has been recorded from many many years ago it's been increasing and especially it start to increase way more when there was an industrial revolution that means uh, people start to use more machine uh, in those ages and of course nowadays as well and co2 was recorded to be way way higher in in terms of its uh like the creation of co2 in the atmosphere so that's why uh, we are having a a worse and worse situation now on earth and before we move on i would like to remind you again that we have to be very careful with our wording in physics. So here, whenever we talk about greens, how it affects is we are talking about the natural consequences of the atmosphere and also of the greenhouse gases. So like what we show just now in the picture, this is something that naturally happened and we need that in order to keep our earth, like what I said in the previous video, livable by us. Right, so that we can keep the temperature around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius instead of negative 16. So this is not necessarily a bad thing. It's somewhat neutral actually. The bad thing, if you if you want to refer to the negative effects of that towards climate change and also the temperature getting warmer and warmer, then we should call it as enhanced greenhouse effects because of the additional or uh, way too much amounts of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. In the last paragraph that I asked you to read, you may not fully understand because of the sentence here, it said energy of molecules is discrete. So if you haven't studied chapter 7 about the um, quantum physics in our chapter, it is very normal right, that you don't understand this part. So uh, it's okay, I think for now what you can perceive it is of uh, like I said, those greenhouse gases will just be effectively absorbing the 
certain electromagnetic wave wavelength so in our case will be infrared photon which is a form of particle of those EM wave so again if you don't fully understand that's fine I think the most important thing is you realize that for different wavelengths there will be different substances they can absorb the most effectively lastly there's a question for you to think and see uh, how you can answer the question is since the earth is becoming warmer and warmer and obviously with a greater temperature then more water will be evaporated from the ocean just like imagine it's a small scale i mean if you have a greater temperature then water of course would be able to evaporate faster like what you learn in IGCIC. can you predict so here is qualitative you don't have to do any calculation just predict qualitatively uh, with this situation the fact would this increase the temperature of the earth itself or not because if this does increase the temperature of the earth further that means this will become vicious cycle right since this would make the earth with greater temperature and greater temperature once again get more water away from the ocean and this will continue so this become vicious cycle so whether or not this is true or not Pause the video, think about it, and we'll talk about it later. A few moments later. The answer is actually quite complicated, so I will try to use the answers from the textbook and I'll further elaborate it. First of all, when you try to evaporate the water, that means energy must be supplied to the water. And where do you get those energy? From the atmosphere, right? So that means from the atmosphere, the atmosphere will kind of get cooled down. I guess the idea is somewhat similar like when you try to spray the water on your body when you get too hot maybe after you do uh, exercise then spraying water can help you to get cooler because of the evaporation effect the other thing is when those water go to the sky it will eventually become cloud and so cloud will actually is a good thing to help us to reflect those sunlight back to the space so they don't get to reach to the earth really and so further reducing the temperature so these two are the uh, examples of the negative effects so that it will make the temperature lower however there is something called the positive effect which uh, will lead to the other way around that means it will increase the temperature of the earth and that is uh, when you evaporate the water from the sea from the ocean then it will also bring the carbon dioxide because the water is somewhat acidic and those CO2 has been dissolved into the ocean water and those CO2 doesn't actually count when they were in water because remember we talk about greenhouse gases so only the gas form of you know those substance will be counts towards uh, contributing to the greenhouse effect so if those gases will be in somewhere away from the atmosphere for example dissolve into the ocean or actually there's another method called um, carbon capturing CCS and this is a really really cool stuff that I've heard before and the main idea is uh, since we have find the CO2 around our atmosphere so we can try to use a certain way to get those CO2 out from the atmosphere and we literally dump it under the ground so that they won't get out again so I don't want to go too deep in details I'll put a link in the description you can go and check it out or simply Google it yourself so back to our question so eventually since we have negative and also positive effects so what do we decide uh, using the qualitative approach we cannot resolve this answer because we really have to calculate which one would weight uh, stronger and more effective and so uh, by certain calculation I mean very detailed complicated calculation then uh, we find out the negative feedback wins in this case so that means uh, somehow when we evaporate the water from the ocean become cloud etc uh, I actually help our earth to cool down really more than uh, making it warmer Climate science is actually a very sophisticated subject which requires a lot of mathematics, computer simulation, and also research as well. So uh, I have actually found a YouTuber called Simon Clark. He is a PhD. I think he graduated already from PhD. So uh, he's actually Dr. Clark now. 
and he studied in climate science. So in his channel, he talked more about uh, how people misunderstood climate change and also there are some other misconception and, and also you can learn a lot from him if you really want to go for university undergraduate study in physics because obviously if you want to study climate science your undergraduate has to be studying physics probably that's all for this part of video in this video you have learned the mechanism of greenhouse effect and also different types of greenhouse gases i'll see you again in the next video